cultural actors and experts. I'm not an expert, and therefore I will just uh, say a few generalities about what the European Union is trying to do in this, uh, in this area. Over the last uh, two to three years, the EU institutions, namely the European Commission, the European External Action Service, the European Parliament, have been developing a reflection about the, the place of culture in our relation with partner countries. And uh, this reflection led to the adoption of uh, an EU strategy on international cultural relations in June 2016, one year ago. And uh, over the last few months, we have been trying, with some difficulties, I must say, to implement that EU strategy. And I would like to say just a few words about this strategy so that you, you better understand what we are trying to do in Ukraine. The uh, EU strategy on international cultural relations focuses on three main strengths. First one, supporting culture as an engine for sustainable social and economic development. Second one, promoting culture and intercultural relations for peaceful intercommunity relations. Third and last one, reinforcing cooperation on cultural heritage. Cultural heritage that uh, Katerina has just uh, uh, referred to. The EU is trying to develop activities in these uh, three areas on the basis of four main guiding principles. First of all, promoting cultural diversity and respect for human rights. It's clear that uh, cultural diversity is a key element of EU values and this has been, this has to be one of our guiding principles in all our uh, activities. Second one, fostering mutual respect and intercultural dialogue. Third one, ensuring respect for complementarity and what we call in our uh, technocratic jargon subsidiarity, which means basically that the EU institution should try to do something in areas where most of our member states are not yet active. And last guiding principle, encouraging a cross-cutting approach to culture. Now I would like to say in a few minutes really, to say a few words about uh, how we try to develop our activities in the three main areas that I have uh, uh, mentioned. Supporting culture as an engine for uh, social and economic development what does this mean? In our view, the economic of, uh, 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 benefits of cultural activities and exchanges are too often overlooked. Uh, we just very often look as, uh, at culture as, a, as an area basically where we talk about uh, history, uh, art, philosophy, but today uh, culture is obviously far broader than just that. Uh, global trade in uh, creative products has more than doubled over the last 10 years, despite the global recession. Culture is a central element in the new economy driven by innovation, by uh, creativity, by uh, digital dimension and access to knowledge. And today, cultural and creative industries represent around 3% of the global GDP, which represent about 330 million jobs. Uh, in uh, the uh, EU alone, these 
industry account for more than 7 million jobs. All this to say that, very often, activities which, one way or another, are related to culture, account for more job creation than traditional industries. And we have, obviously, to keep this in mind. Alors, it's totally useless to say this kind of thing to experts in the cultural area like you, but when we talk uh, about culture and cultural activities with uh, the average citizen, it's very important to stress this dimension. Uh, culture is not just, once again, about, uh, about art, about uh, philosophy and history, but it is about the development of uh, innovation, creative industries, about the digital economy, and in the end about job creation, which ultimately, obviously, uh, is one of our uh, main objectives uh, here in Ukraine. Second point, promoting uh, intercultural dialogue and the role of culture for peaceful intercommunity relations. <coughs> intercultural dialogue, including interreligious dialogue, is a key tool in promoting fair, peaceful and inclusive societies, as well as uh, the value of cultural diversity and respect for human rights. Intercultural dialogue establishes common ground for exchanges and a favorable environment for exchanges Intercultural dialogue is promoted through cooperation between cultural operators, obviously, through peace building uh, cultural activities and exchanges between young people, students, researchers, uh, activists, and alumni. So, here again, we have to have a very broad conception of cultural activities, which include, which cover scientific activities, research, and uh, student exchanges. Cooperation on the protection of uh, cultural heritage is very important as well, and we have to give uh, an important uh, uh, role and space to everything which is linked, which is related to our cultural heritage. Third area, cultural heritage, which is an important manifestation of cultural diversity and which need to be protected. The rehabilitation and the promotion of cultural heritage, as we can imagine, attract tourism and boost economic development. And therefore, we have to pay due attention to this important element of uh, our cultural activities and uh, uh, the EU has been supporting research and innovation in the field of uh, cultural heritage through our uh, research program Horizon 2020 that some of you obviously know well. We have under uh, this Horizon 2020 program a large number of uh, research activities, some of them related to the protection of uh, cultural heritage, and Ukraine, being an associated member of Horizon 2020, Ukrainian people can participate to search to such sorry uh, research and innovation programs for the implementation of these activities. Our EU delegation in Kiev obviously has to play a key role. Until now, we have not been extremely active. Culture was not one of our uh, main priority. But I can assure you that uh, my strong wish is to make sure that our EU delegation in Kiev will be, uh, in the near future, in the next few months and years, far more active in promoting joint cultural uh, activities. I hope that uh, we will be an, an enabler, we will encourage synergies and cooperation between our EU national cultural institutes, which are very often very active, and we should as well 
develop and promote synergies before between the private and the public sector, namely between uh, private uh, cultural operators and ministries and public entities which play uh, uh, an active role in the field of uh, uh, culture. Here, uh, in Ukraine, we have been trying up to now very modestly uh, to uh, promote uh, culture through the provision of uh, capacity building uh, and uh, network development, ensuring better access to current EU cultural cooperation program. In 2015, Ukraine joined our uh, Creative Europe uh, program and uh, this uh, Creative Europe program should in principle fund, finance, support financially a number of uh, cultural activities in Ukraine. Unfortunately, up to now, our uh, Creative Europe desk has not really been uh, provided with a lot of uh, means and instruments. We have a Creative Europe desk. I hope that most, uh, most of you are already in contact with uh, this Ukrainian lady, which is uh, operating under the uh, auspices of the Ministry of, uh, of Education and Culture. I hope, not sorry, the Ministry of Culture, not Education of Culture. And I hope that uh, in the next few months, this uh, Creative Europe desk will be empowered so that it can uh, make sure that uh, our EU funding uh, budget line are uh, better exploited, better used by Ukrainian uh, actors. We uh, try as well uh, to make sure that uh, Ukrainian actors of the emerging cultural industries uh, are better mobilized to benefit from our uh, Creative Europe uh, program. Uh, we are really uh, uh, convinced as well that culture has to be uh, uh, better uh, uh, promoted at local level and that uh, Ukrainian municipalities and local communities should play a more active role in uh, cultural activities. This is why it is important to establish a close link between the decentralization process, which is a success in your country, I must say, and the development of cultural activities. On our side, we have a big program called ULEAD, which is backing the decentralization process, and I will make sure that our experts working in the framework of our ULEAD program uh, can play a role as well to empower municipalities and uh, local communities when it comes to the development of uh, cultural activities. And finally, before uh, ending the floor to uh, more qualified people than me to talk about culture, I would, I would like to say a word, uh, uh, I would like to say a word about uh, the role of civil society. It's clear that uh, traditionally uh, cultural diplomacy has been uh, the responsibility of states and government. And uh, uh, government have used the cultural diplomacy to pursue their interests. Culture has been used in many instances as a weapon to, uh, to, pro to uh, promote propaganda. Uh, today, in our connected world, when uh, all citizens are uh, connected to uh, everybody, uh, the civil society has to play a role. Cultural diplomacy should not be the monopoly of the state. I'm not at all uh, trying to uh, reduce your role. I just say that uh, uh, with uh, the current role of social media, it's clear that citizens and therefore, civil society organizations have, have to play a strong role, a strong role in uh, cultural activities. And this is all the more true in a country like uh, Ukraine, where uh, the civil uh, society is 
is extremely uh, powerful, vibrant, and therefore uh, I hope that our delegation will be in a permanent contact and dialogue with uh, civil society organization because I am convinced that <coughs> NGOs, human rights activists, uh, all kinds of civil society representatives should play an increasing role in the promotion of culture in this country, in the development of joint Ukrainian European Union actions in the field of culture, and you can count on the EU delegation to support the civil society in Ukraine in the field of culture. So to conclude, up to now we have been rather weak in the field of culture, but you can count on me to back Ukrainian ministries, civil society organizations, think tanks to better use what the EU can put at the disposal of Ukraine in this area.